that was the first basic concept what was the second basic concept right. event and there you have to make a, another word event of interest event of interest so then you will say that why uh, today interest is coming because i had told in the last class event is always characterized by a, a statement not a sentence by a statement and everyone know the difference between sentence and a statement a statement it would be either true or false so it falls in that category so that's way you have to take an outcome from the experiment and you have to verify whether that outcome comes in that event or not or whether that outcome satisfy that uh, a statement or not if it is satisfying that a statement then it will fall in the event if it is not satisfying the statement it will fall in the complement of the event so that so it is one kind of uh, what we call it uh, binary selection or we uh, there are two kind of uh, classification problem you can call classifying the outcome from experiment so classification kind of problem simply you can say that so i am coming with recap of every class so here in the last class we discussed these things like what is uh, sample space i mentioned that it is a collection of all possible outcome yeah it is collection of all possible outcome in a random experiment all all word is very uh, meaningful it is a quantity in nature uh, you, are, you have to take consideration of all possible outcome if you are missing any one of the outcome then you are failing you are mi making mistake in formulating that probabilistic problem so you have to know all what are the possible outcome if you are simply tossing a coin head or tail if you are throwing a dice uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 if you are throwing uh, two dice together then order pair ij i varies from 1 to 6 j varies from 1 to 6 in total 36 outcomes are possible so you need to know all possible outcome if you are willing to model it probabilistically okay now once uh, that one example that same two dice throw uh, we had already discussed in last class and these are the uh, all possible collection of all possible outcomes so that's why we denote it by omega sample space okay next basic concept was event of interest so interest is designed by a statement so uh, there you come up with an a statement in the uh, in the problem so that uh, it simply classify outcomes whether it falls in that event or whether uh, those outcomes are satisfying the statement or not if it is satisfying it will fall in the event if it is not satisfying it will come in the complement of that so that is the approach okay so likewise here uh, a statement is the sum of number on the dice is seven so that one is a statement if those a statement those outcome which are satisfying the statement those falls in the event e these are the uh, specific outcome which are satisfying the event so that's why those are in this event e and those not satisfying those falls in e complement complement of that so these we had already discussed and next concept or next basic concept of the probability modeling is probability measure so loosely you can call it probability of an event so actually actual name mathematically is probability measure so probability measure today in today's lecture we will discuss about probability measure so simply call it uh, there are various name you can call it a map or you can call it degree of confidence how much confident you are that if you're throwing a dice how much confident you are that probability of head would be 0.5 how much confident that probability of tail would be 0.5 so con degree of confidence but uh, <laughs> simply you will say that uh, no uh, i just tossed a coin uh, 10 times and every time i got head then I, my degree of confidence is what not not like that that approach is empirical approach empirical approach is always verified verified by a theory well well planned well crafted theory that kolmogorov will say that so through that approach we will not compute probability of getting head so another approach we will have that that approach i will discuss here so uh, that probability of uh, an event we will come up with uh, uh, a suitable theory that one is developed by Kolmogorov. that approach we will say that we will not go for empirical approach that number of element in the event divided by number of outcome in the sample space not like that 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 one is very a specific formula that one is very specific in a specific case that that one is coming so probability measure you can call it it is an assignment number or degree of belief or degree that we associate to an event 
so how we uh, define it so to model a random experiment intuitively probability measure as specifies as the likelihood of occurrence of an event likelihood of occurrence of an event so likelihood may not define the complete probability distribution of com all the possible probabilities in that sample of space it is defining just likelihood of a probability of one a specific kind of event likelihood of one event or something like that okay it may not satisfy the properties of being a probability measure probability of being so normalizing later you will see that so a probability measure simply uh, you can say that it is numeric attempt to quantify probability or degree of belief so numerically we specify a probability measure for each event a as a degree of confidence uh, whether that event a occurs or not okay uh, by assigning a number p of a and we call it is a map from sigma omega to close interval 0 1 sigma omega to close interval 0 1 anyone know that uh, do you feel little bit uncomfort by saying sigma omega honest uncomfort or have you seen sigma, sigma omega before that you know actually sigma uh, it is taken from the word it is a sigma algebra of omega omega you have already seen omega is what sample space sample as sigma is what it is not summation kind of things there are uh, in if you are uh, dealing with set theory things what are the, what is the summation you are getting it through addition no. in summation what is the basic operation in summation addition and someone is saying that subtraction might be also there so what is subtraction is it addition or something else subtraction is actually a special case of addition a special case of addition so in algebra actually there are two operations addition and multiplication if you are saying division why what about division division is a special kind of multiplication like a by b you are writing then what does it mean a into 1 by b if b is a non zero number then 1 by b is also a non zero real number so that's you are multiplying a with 1 by b then a by b is defined okay so there are actually algebra there are two operations addition and multiplication and if you are talking uh, uh, within number numbers and if you talk about uh, in set theory addition becomes union are you getting meaning of this or not have you seen that uh, structure and what is the multiplication in in set theory intersection intersection if you follow einstein work something like that he is very smart in using uh, juxtaposition notation and very even is, he is not using summation notation as well. If he, later you will see tensor analysis, something like that. There terms, uh, you will see that uh, uh, there is involvement of summation, uh, xi, i varies from 1 to infinity, something like that. Then finite sum is not, uh, it is very obvious kind of thing. So when you are talking about summation, you have to talk about uh, sum of term of infinite series. Finite sum, it is a fixed number. <coughs> fixed number so there there is no uh, smartness there in you know to look at lot of things so sum means uh, in finite sum generally you talk about series is in finite sum so you are talking about that so in tensor you will see that notation in notation summation will there will be no summation there summation notation would be no, no there so simply xi might be there and that time you have to consume uh, that it is actually summation in tensor not everywhere when you study tensor uh, analysis and now these days in machine learning people are using in call app tensor flow something like that google has come up with tensor flow everyone might have heard but if you t uh, want to know basic about that you have to go through go through that it is generalization of vector so uh, here simply i i would like to so, uh, like to say that you are writing probability of a you read it probability of a so it is what assignment number or you will read it probability measure of the event a and probability measure of the event a it is a map from sigma omega to close interval 0 1 what is sigma omega it is collection of subset of omega under certain uh, structure there would be that that's why sigma sigma algebra it is making later i will say that in loose way you can say that subset you have in the sample space you have constructed it by using some a special kind of a statement that means you are not uh, uh, making subset of a 
sample stress in ad hoc approach. You are making in a very uh, specialized approach that a specialization is coming from where? A yeah, statement. A statement under consider consideration or as per demand of a statement. So, sigma algebra, sigma you have constructed, constructed as a collection of subset of omega by using a statements, various kind of a statement, various kind of. Like here uh, in the last example in tossing, uh, rolling two dice, you can come up with a statement, sum is two, sum is three, sum is four, sum is five, like that. You can come up with that. If someone is saying sum is 13, how many uh, outcome there in that? No outcome. So, empty set. What would be your subset? What would be your event? Empty, empty set. Is set, a set having no element, no outcome. What is the probability of that? It would be 0 by default. Impos impossible event. That you say that impossible event, probability is 0. So, like, that is why uh, we are saying it like that also phi is also here. So, probability measure P, it is a function from sigma algebra omega to 0 1 open close interval 0 1 and it satisfies three properties, three axioms. If there is an axiom, you know no need to prove it. By default, it, it would be true. In geometry, high school geometry, you might have heard Euclidean axiom, something like that. How many line you can draw from two points? How many line you can draw from two points, passing through two points? One. So, it might be mentioned there it is an axiom. Do you need to prove it? No. Just draw it, you will see that. It is an, by default, it is true. Universally, it is true. So, these are also universally true axioms. What is So, first axiom is probability of probability measure. You will read it probability measure of uh, empty set phi is 0. And complement of that is probability measure of sample of space is 1. That means you are taking consideration of all possible outcomes. Someone is saying that uh, if I uh, if you if you are th throwing a uh, coin and you say that I will win when I will get uh, head or tail, what will happen? He will always win. So that situation is coming. So that one is a very much certain kind of things. So if you are taking uh, consideration of all possible outcome, that means uh, you are talking about sample space. So property of sample space is one. Okay. The second property is that uh, if you are taking a proper subset of a sample space. That means you are taking an event which is neither phi nor omega it, between these two. Then what is the probability of that event A? It would be between 0 and 1. Here open interval is coming here. So this we call it proper event. Phi and omega are improper event, improper kind of things. And A is proper event. When? When A is not equal to phi or A is not equal to omega, then proper event. So, if you are taking a proper event, then probability would be between 0 and 1. And what is third one? The important property of probability measure is third one. If you are taking two disjoint event, the what is the probability of union of those two? It is just summation. That means we are adding addition, summation. Okay. So, probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. When remember that it is an axiom, you don't need to prove it. it is a, and we will utilize this axiom in order to establish further results. So that that would be our approach to uh, understand this course. So I think there would be no issue with uh, understanding that probability measure. It is satisfying three properties. Only that I haven't discussed about how to compute probability measure of an event. Right now I'm saying that what is probability measure of an event? Okay, and it is satisfying three properties. These are very much e essential and property is that property of sample space equal to 1, you can call it normalizing property as well, normalizing property. And property is that property of uh, phi equal to 0, you can call it impossible kind of thing. Property of 0, impossibility, reflect imp impossibility. Okay. So, just one uh, thing that third property, we can generalize it for uh, summability issue. Summability up to summability. Here, if you are talking about plus, then that one is sum. You are talking about sum. It is talking sum. So, the sum and union is very much, uh, uh, sum and union both are very much associated to each other. So, if you are taking collection of countable, uh, countably, uh, count and mutually disjoint event. Are you getting mutually disjoint? There is no, if you take uh, any two event, 
there would be no common mutually disjoint. If you take collection of mutually disjoint event and if you are willing to find union of those mutually, mutually disjoint, uh, probability of union of those mutually disjoint uh, event, then what you do? Just use sum the probability of individual events. So that uh, probability, that pro axiom 3 has been generalized to this. Axiom 3 is generalized to this. This is this we call it summability or additive property of probability measure. Here it is always possible that uh, there might be if a sample space ha is having various terms, no, infinite terms, you can come up with uh, infinite events, infinite number of events. Okay, if you are coming with that, then then you can always make a sequence of event. That uh, that thing also I will discuss sequence of event. So if you are having sequence of event like a1, a2, a3, a4 like that, okay. Like here also you can make sequence of students, like first year student, second year student, third year student, fourth year student. So you are getting so all the student of triple IIT Harvard has been converted into how many sets? Four. A1. First year student, A2, second year student, A3, third year student, A4, fourth year student. Likewise, A5 would be what? Just passed. A6, then like that. You can make it like uh, uh, passed before just that. And like you can make a sequence like that. So, always possible to make sequence of uh, events. So, those are events now. I am talking about events. I am not talking about individual outcome like that events. So, you can always get uh, sequence of events there in any scenario. If you are having sequence event and you are getting a countable sequence of events. So, how you and you observe that do you see that there is overlap between uh, first year student and second year student? Do you see? No. So, mutually disjoint, mutually disjoint. So that kind of so here this would be mutually disjoint. So probability of union of AIs would be equal to just uh, sum up probability of AIs, sum of probability. So that so it is generalized from. So you can say that it is actually uh, third property, th uh, third axiom, three dash. Also you can say that it is three dash for when you are having a countable number of events. Third dash you can call it. It is generalized from here. Or you can say that, so that's where sigma word is coming. So sigma word is, is justified. Sigma word. Union, it is uh, dealing with union kind of things. Sigma is dealing with union, all possible union kind of in a very specific way. Okay. And now, uh, I have taken few example values of uh, probability measure A. Okay, pro, P of A. So uh, if you suppose P of A value, it comes 1, what you will say that? What you will infer? You will say that A is a certain event. It will happen, always it will happen in any sense. There is no randomness in that. If someone is saying the probability of A is equal to 0, then you will say that A is impossible event. Then someone is saying that probability of A is 0.7, then you will say that it will happen with degree of confidence 70% or 0.7. If you convert 0.7 into percentage, and both are related, uh, interchangeable to each other. Okay. So, these are the meaning of probability measure of an event. Okay. Now, I will talk about uh, probabilistic modeling. So, we discuss about three basic components of probabilistic modeling. What are those? Sample space and how you compute sample space in how many steps? Two steps. First, you identify a general outcome. Then in second step, you list out all possible outcomes. Then you got sample space. Then second is event, event of interest. So uh, again, how you compute event of interest in how many steps? Three, two steps. I had discussed two steps. In first step, what you do? What you do? Identify the statement. And in second step, take an outcome from the sample space and see whether it is satisfying that statement or not. If it is satisfying, put that in the basket of event. Okay. If it is not satisfying, throw it in another basket like that. So again, computing event is two step. Now, you came to define probability measure, the third basic concept. Then how many steps you need? 
How many are step you need? I have, right now I am not asking to compute the probability measure. I am asking uh, to define probability measure. How many are step you need? Just for definition. In the case of sample space and event, uh, just one one a statement was fine to define that uh, sample space is collection of all, all possible outcome. Event is collection of some possible outcome, not all possible outcome. Collection of some possible outcome, those are satisfying the given statement, given a statement. That is the uh, event. Now, once you are willing to define probability measure, then you need four things. What are the four things? First, you need a probability measure as a map from sigma alpha, sigma alpha, uh, sigma algebra of omega to close interval 0, 1. First, second, the axiom 1, third, the axiom 2, and fourth, the axiom 3rd. So, four component you need in order to define probability measure of an event. Are you getting meaning of this or not? Now, next we will discuss about uh, how to compute probability measure. So, we will compute probability measure where? We will compute probability measure in the process of probabilistic modeling. So, now I am coming to discuss about probabilistic modeling. So, what is, so I, I am giving a pictorial description of probabilistic modeling and what are the components. So, pictorially a probabilistic model of uncertain things or uh, quantity or whatever random experiment, it involves three basic concepts. Uh, ingredient also you can call it sample space, event and probability measure. And the computation of probability measure is done through a probability law. Probability law is the tool through which you will able to compute probability measure of an event. So, a probability law is very much important and then if you are combining all these together, you are getting a probabilistic model of a random experiment or random phenomena. So, here the scenario, so experiments means by default consider a random experiment. This one is a random experiment. In this random experiment, you come up with a sample space as the first uh, ingredient or first basic concept and the second one is event okay. and third one is probability measure P of A what it is written here. And now you will talk about computation of probability measure. You compute it through a law and if you are uh, unable to digest this probability law, do not worry about that. Probability law is not just, uh, it is not a very abstract thing. What is this? This is actually talking about occurrence pattern of the outcomes, occurrence pa pattern. So, how all, all these three things deal with at the atomic level outcome. Outcome is important now. If you perform an experiment uh, one time, you will observe outcomes. Second time, again outcome, some outcome like that. So, outcome is the in, uh, basic or fundamental thing in here. I have not discussed that uh, sample space is the fundamental thing. I discussed that sample space event or probability measure, these are the basic concept. Uh, what is the fundamental thing? Outcome. outcome. So, through outcome, uh, you will design probability law. Probability law is dealing with occurrence of outcome, how outcome occurs, the law, there might be law. What is the law? So, that law is coming here. So, I will discuss in detail like that. Now, we are planning to compute probability measure of an event in a random exper uh, experiment under a pre-specified law of occurrence. Law of occurrence of outcome. In short, you can call it probability law in the experiment. So, what are the possible law? So, these are the possible law we can talk about. Some existing law of occurrence of outcomes and uh, it is very much associated with a structure of the sample space. If sample space is what? It is a set and you need to know that there are a lot of concept hidden in the set. So, we have to just explore those things and uh, combining law of occurrence and combining the structure of sample space as a set and we will make to compute probability measure. So, the first approach is uniform law, uniform law. What is probability law? Or law of probability law or law of occurrence of outcome is uniform law. What is meaning of uniform law? Or you can say that democratic law. That means in democracy you say that everyone is having equal chance of participation in uh, parliament, in your area, 
uh, in uh, anywhere in election or any everyone it is not like that uh, one, only a specific person can participate there equally likely situation this we call it uniform law or equally likely situation everyone having a right to same right to participate to uh, in election same right to vote in election it is not like that uh, someone is having um, very a specific reason to vote and another one is not having so democratic law simply uniform law or democratic law you can see that uh, you can say that so uniform law and finite sample of space uniform law and finite sample of space this one is what is meaning of finite sample of space if you talk about uh, the we indian who take part in election so is it a finite count or infinite count finite so finite so that's the finite sample is it is not like that infinite kind of things you will see that so finite so uniform and how we participate there uh, in election in uniform way but remember that there is a uh, condition that what uh, who can vote who are having age above 18 so that also you have to put so the voting means by default you have to consider that scenario you don't by default you have to consider that scenario so we are talking about that scenario so uniform law and finite sample of space then again uniform is what if you the first step approach is uniform approach democratic then you will see that some specification would be there that we call it non uniformity a non uniform law why it is started with uniform law we have elected people through uh, voting okay and then one person becomes mp do you see after election of that person do you see the right of your, your right and that elected people right are same those are fall in the same category that mp is having various privilege he become a specialized kind of thing as in a special category so if you talk about the regarding right right now right is now it is distributed uniformly if you talk about uh, public servant do you have same right what public servant are having not so after uh, it started from the uniform law then after you observe some kind of non non uniformity a specialization that we call it a specialization change changes uh, behavior is changes so that's non uniform so you will see that uh, law of occurrence either uniform law or non uniform law in finite sample space okay then you will have uh, countably in finite sample space as well if you are tossing a coin and you will you have been given a task keep on tossing till you get a head what would be possibility of trial how many trial you have to perform if you are lucky then in the first toss you will get head otherwise you have to keep on tossing is there that possibility or not that you will never get it uh, head that also uh, there is a uh, probability is very small very very small rare kind of thing but that possibility is also there now so you have to loss so here you observe the sample of space is infinite and countably infinite infinite there are two way un un uncountable way and countable way that i will explain in the next slide in the coming slide so all these are here what i discuss about all these occurs in sequential pattern so there is a sequential pattern so that's way the probability measure what we will compute in this category we call it uh, discrete probability measure discrete probability measure and the corresponding model we call it discrete probability model are you getting meaning of this or not we don't get no worry next slide things are there okay i will make uh, to understand discrete and everything all. so second approach of probabilistic modeling is uh, uniform law again you have to apply and you have to come up with uh, uncountable but compact sample space uncountable means what you fail to p it is first it is infinite second you fail to put in a sequential form uh, that is meaning of uncountable that means uh, if you you talk about set of natural number that one is also infinite you talk about uh, close interval 0 1 that one is also infinite 
what is the difference between these two what are the difference between these two the set of natural number you can put in a sequence xn such that xn equal to n x1 equal to 1 x2 equal to 2 x3 equal to 2 so there is a proper sequence sequence so set of natural number uh, having infinite number of terms but those terms we can put in a sequence so we observe a pattern if i talk about uh, numbers in uh, interval close interval 0 1 can you put in a sequence it is not possible to put in a sequence so that one is uh, infinite as well as not possible to put in a se sequence single sequence form that is the nature of uncountable set we call what we call it uncountable set okay so if you are having uh, what is meaning of uniform law there so uniform law you can't put in a, a set having uh, their co concept would be their length infinite length of a continuous set like close interval 0 1 is a continuous set you can't put uh, uh, uniform law there in only in a set continuous set with finite length you can put uniform law so uniform law it will come with uh, uh, compact sample space uncountable and compact sample space and also uh, if you observe some a specification then that uh, may lead to a non uniform law as well a specification would be there then that may lead to a non uniform uh, law as well okay now if you talk about uncountable but non compact non compact i will explain that uh, as well non compact non compact is giving actually again finite version of uh, continuous set uh, interval kind of set better right now everyone might be aware of invert inter in interval so uh, actually non compact uh, uh, com if you are talking about uh, uh, an interval finite interval that means length is finite then uh, it is in compact form it is getting a finite structure uh, fine. so that's where you can define uniform law there but if, if it is it is not possible to come up with uh, in finite uh, sorry, finite uh, structure there in uh, uh, interval then you can't define uniform law there you can't uh, come up with uniform law there in that case so that's why uniform law it is coming with uncountable sample space so those are just word right now uh, not a complicated and the corresponding probabilistic model we will call it continuous probabilistic modeling the example is that you can talk about uh, uh, dice uh, sorry uh, dart game if you are throwing a dart then there is a circular region so how many uh, points would be there in the sample space uncountable points be there in, it would be complete disk disk region the circular region so uncountable points and the uh, so those things will come here so in next class I, I in slide i am discussing about countable sets and uncountable set in order to understand discrete and continuous probability um, model in a detailed way. What is countable set? Very simple thing. Uh, what is meaning meaning of countable set? If you define a bijection or injection, injection means one one map. Injection means injective one one map. If you defi define a one one map from set of natural number to the given set, then you can say that that set is a countable set bijection is a very special case of injection do you know that or not uh, surjective you are injection injective plus surjective so that's a bijection is very special case of inject injection so countable set means uh, that uh, you are defining injection from the uh, injection uh, from set of natural number to the given set what does it mean means that means you are putting the element of that set in the form of sequence what is the definition of sequence in uh, i think 10th uh, or plus 2 you might have already seen that sequence how you are defining curly bracket a n n belongs to natural number like that that notation you might have already what does it mean actually it is a sequence defined from what is the domain of that natural number and you are defining it from there a n is coming from n so the same thing is coming so that means uh, and a range may be a real number like that so in sequence uh, you are getting a proper pattern you can say that which term is coming first which term is coming next and like that so there is a order order kind of thing so that order property is coming from natural number natural number number is having well ordering property 
there in natural number always you can say that which number is coming first and which number is coming. I am giving two numbers arbitrarily then definitely you can decide which number is coming first and which number is coming. Like I am saying that 10 and 12 then you will definitely say that 10 is coming before 12. So, there is a order well order for the well order natural number. So, that is why sequencing when you are defining a sequence the, uh, within the terms there is a well ordering property it borrowed from the well ordering property of natural number. So, when you what is meaning of countable set if you are able to come up with a simple injection or bijection map from natural number to that set omega then that means you are able to write that set in sequence form you are omega is equal to some sequence some sequence omega is sample so omega equal to some sequence then you say that omega is a countable sample space or countable set simply you say that like the example I am taking it here like uh, take omega like this way there are how many points I do not know actually it is not given not do not say infinite so there are various points if you are able to put a sequence like you are saying a1 a2 a3 a4 5 like that you are able to do that sequencing thing that means you are able to write omega in term of sequence that means this omega is a countable set ok and uh, other example is if you take set of posi uh, positive integers then easily you can define a bijection from set of natural number to set of positive integer that we denote z plus how xn such that xn equal to n it is a sequence and every countable set is having unique sequence it is not like that two different possibilities unique sequence unique things would be there every countable unique sequence not two sequence will come here second example like, like take uh, integers integers uh, include positive integers negative inter integers and zero as well ok like that. So, how you define uh, a bijection from set of natural number to z you define it very simple take even number. So, even an odd number we never talk in natural number uh, sorry integer we always talk in natural number are you getting meaning of this or not someone can say that 2.5 is even or odd. 2.5 is even or odd such question would be not there even and odd concepts are actually uh, there are things known is hidden even natural number odd natural number. So, by default it is very shortcut that uh, we just take even or odd like that. So, actually it is defined for natural number ok. So, there if you take even natural number divide it by 2 and take negative it will map to where? like take where when you are unable to visualize take example. So, even natural number take 2 divide it by 2 and take negative what it becomes minus 1 take 4 next even number is 4 4 divided by 2 and take negative minus 2 take 6 divided by 2 and take negative minus 3. So, if you take all possible even number and divide it by 2 and take negative then what does it becomes it covers all possible negative integers ok. Now, in next um, this function in next part of function it is defined as take odd number subtract by minus 1 and divide it by 2 what you will get you will get positive integers including 0 as well like n is yeah n equal to 1 if you take n equal to 1 1 minus 1 is what 0 divide by 2 0. So, 1 is mapped to 0 take next odd is number is what 3 3 minus 1 is 2 divide by 2 minus 1. So, 3 map to 1 and like 5 map to 2 like that. So, uh, that odd natural number map to 0 1 2 3 non negative integer that we call it non negative integers it map to. So, geometrically you can see like this way this is the mapping. And what about this mapping? Is it invertible? Is it invertible or not? You can try invert pattern. Invert pattern, what is the inverse formula? So, how to define inverse formula for that means define a map from z to n. Just it is otherwise you can find uh, in one of my notebook, you can find it. And there is a book I have written Introduction to Probability and Statistics, also in that uh, you can find all those. Okay it is published in archive. 
Okay, so these are the examples uh, for countable sets. We will look for more examples like uh, we will go for order pair, Cartesian product. So uh, if you are taking natural number, what, what about n cross n, whether it is again countable or not? It is again countable. Why? Because you can again define a bijection from n to n cross n. Then you will say that what is the explicit form of bijection? Then don't worry about that pictorial uh, representation of that one. Contour has given a lot. So contour, C-O-N-T-O-U-R. He was a great mathematician. He come up with a lot of examples. So one example, you can see it like this way. Is it visible to all? So you took uh, n cross n. Like uh, first coordinate is also coming natural number. Second coordinate is also coming natural number. So make all possible order pair, n cross n. And come up with a linking through weight. How you are linking through weight? Weight. Weight you will define by summing the entries in that coordinate. What is the weight of 1, 1? It would be 2. Weight. You have to come up with some kind of weight. There are various weights people can come up with. You can come up with division or something like that. Various, as per your choice. Uh, depends on weight. So it is very. So uh, you can call it uh, the first entry. Two, uh, weight, uh, weight minus 1. You can say that weight minus 1. So 2 minus 1 would be 1. So 1, 1 is mapped to 1. Then uh, next weight would be, then next you will, what is the sum of, uh, 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 sum of uh, 1, 2, 3. Sum up uh, like that, you can come up with design like this way. These are the designing. You can see the sequence pattern. Are you observing a pattern? So this pattern you observe. So this pattern is, uh, this pattern is very much linked with N, natural number very much linked with. So you, are, so you can say that this one is the first element, this one is the second element, this one is the third element. Like means you are putting a sequence, sequence setup. So you are saying this is the first element. Remember that you there is no order property in R cross R. In 2D, you can't say that uh, point 0.12 is greater than point 0.21. Can you say that? There is no order property. There is no. But we are coming with a sequence. We are com coming with a sequence. Or you can come up with a distance. Distance Through distance, you can say that uh, 1, 1 is nearer to origin with respect to 2, 2. You can say that 2, 2, something like that. That distance is coming. So don't worry about distance. I am not talking about that. So here, simply I am saying that if you are having n cross n, you can come up with a sequential notation. So that means you are able to put uh, element of n cross n in a single sequence form in a single. It is not like that there would be multiple sequence, single sequence form. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So you are will able to put all these terms, uh, members of the uh, n cross n in a single sequence form. So that's why n cross n is a countable set. What is the next countable set? Z cross Z. Is it a uh, countable set? That means whether we are able to put uh, uh, that uh, element of Z cross Z in a sequence? Yes, we can put. So sequence, this kind of sequence. So Z cross Z, it is coming like that how? You can see it here. This is Z cross Z. So negative and positive integers including 0. So you can start with 0 and you make a path like this way. This one is a spiral away. There is a in differential equation course would be there. There you will come to know. Actually, uh, it is talking about unstable solution of difference equation. Later, you will come to know. So, a, spir a spiral away. The reverse would be a spiral in. A spiral in. So, these kind of things. So, again, this one is a countable set. Z cross Z is a countable set. How many of you can say that? What about rational numbers? Is it countable or not? Rational numbers. Okay, is it like uh, uniform de decision like everyone say that uh, no? Anyone is there who can say that uh, in different category? Set of rational number, set of rational number is countable or not? No. No. Okay, then see the def definition. The first approach to answer any problem is the definition of that thing. But how you define rational number? How you define? And you will change your answer. 
after seeing the definition. So, best approach is that to deal a problem is the a first a step would be recall the definition. What is P and Q? What are these? What are these? What are these? P and Q? Co prime. Before that, what are these? What what kind of number? What? Integers. So these are integers. That would be. See what you have seen before. So try to answer from based on that. So P and Q are integers. Z you are writing and you uh, in order to make it set you put extra line. One extra line. Then it becomes. Yeah. And uh, then zero if you take in denominator it would be not defined. So you have to put condition here. Q is not equal to zero. And later co prime also you can put various things. I can define various things regarding uh, uh, rationals. So tell me, how does it look like Q? Is it now? Now can you say that is it countable or not? Till now I have given picture of Q, definition of Q. Is it countable or not? No. Not. Okay. Then P and Q, you can write it like this way. I am changing the form of definition. You are taking writing as P. You have to answer. It is a very simple thing. I can make a drawing of this one. There is no issue. P, comma Q such that P comma Q is having a definition. Order pair P Q is P comma Q. It is having a definition. It is explicitly defined as P comma Q as P by Q. You are defining it. It is not. Uh, anyone may suggest what is the way of. Uh, what is the meaning of this uh, uh, expression? If you are writing uh, x equal to something, what does it mean? What is meaning of something that one is coming in right hand side and what is meaning of something that one is coming in left hand side? What is the name of uh, equality, equal sign? At least you people have um, uh, some idea of computers, I think, some idea of uh, computer programming, some kind of things. We call it assignment sign. So, the left side which appears, we say that left side quantity is assigned the right hand quantity. So, that means it is defined. So, I am saying that P comma Q equal to something that means just click in mind that now it is going to assign, it is going to get something, it is going to define, better word is it is going to define by, assigned by better word is defined by. So, P comma Q in this special case is defined by. Uh, P comma Q is defined by P by Q and P and Q satisfy the above properties. This above property what I, ha I had mentioned in the same way. Okay. Now, can you say what uh, what is, is it uh, countable or not Q? Countable. Why you are changing your answer? And so, it, it does look like that, uh, it does look like uh, here. Uh, Loosely, you can say that it is actually Z cross Z. Z a star, put it Z a star because Q should not be 0. So, little bit you have to a specific Z a star. So, if you are removing one element from countable infinitely count, uh, countable set, then it is not going to affect much. You are changing. In sequence, if you are truncating few terms, whether it is going to change that sequence? Convergence behavior, another kind of convergency of sequence you might have already, limit of sequence you might have already seen that. So, whether it is going to change the behavior of sequence? Not. If you are uh, terminating or uh, truncating few terms, it is not going to change the behavior of that. Okay. It is it is not going to change the behavior. Okay. So, that one. So, Z cross, so one element 0 we have truncated it from uh, integer. Z cross Z star. So, what you observe that, what you will say that Q is a countable set. You, that means you can define a bijection from set of natural number to set of 
rational so it is countable so you have already studied all possible countable set no uh, there is no left left one after word whatever set will come those will fall in the uncountable category or uncountable so we finished countable sets now we will talk about uncountable set a rational so if you take uh, rationals uh, between 0 and 1 then always they can take form of 1 by 2 1 by 3 2 by 3 kind of you can you can come up with a sequence so one example of uh, rational, subset of rational we have taken it like this way so here a better uh, sequential form you can get it uh, from where decimal representation i will talk about decimal representation as well but if you are interested you can go for decimal representation it is part of calculus Cal it is part of calculus uh, I, I won't go in detail again again it will take time yes It is saying that uh, uh, these are rational number where denominator is between zero and uh, actually a rational number where numbers between zero and one. All the rational number between zero and one. All rational number rational numbers between zero and one. So these are the collection of rational number between zero and one. And how it is constructed? You can see the pattern. One by two, then you can't take two in denominator now onward. What will happen? Next you have to increase the denominator. One by three. 2 by 3 then finished then you have to take denominator 4 1 by 4 2 by 4 if someone is saying that why not 2 by 4 a 2 by 4 is actually 1 by 2 simpler actually rational numbers are uh, actually equivalence classes with the division algorithm do you know division algorithm it is uh, Euclidean division algorithm what you call you have to do. remember uh, that one is especially for integers uh, like that you have to come up with uh, idea of division. Uh, you have to come. So it is very much associated with that. So it is designed in a very interesting pattern. If you see uh, this subset of rational number, it is designed in a very uh, nice pattern. And you see a sequence. There is a sequence, proper sequence. What you, you can put name of that sequence. You can try to put name of that sequence. If you come up with then it's fine. OK. Then I will generalize countable set for the perspective of using or modeling a random phenomena as discrete discrete probabilistic modeling. So countable set is defining discrete set. Every countable set is a discrete set. What is meaning of discrete set? Discrete set means if you take a local neighborhood, are you do you know meaning of neighborhood? Everyone might be aware of neighbor. Neighbor. So it is defining neighborhood. So someone say that uh, what is meaning of neighborhood? Can uh, people from other village may falls in the neighborhood of your your neighborhood? No. Or even in the same village, people from other street can fall in your neighborhood? So you have to come up with a length of length of what measure? How small or how big neighborhood would there? So I think uh, people are saying where stress. Someone is saying uh, Ramanujan actually if silent term is given there. If silent word. If silent is a notation of a positive real number which is as small as possible not as big as possible say as small as possible can you say that uh, what is the smallest positive real number anyone can say that a smallest positive real number can you say that no someone is saying that okay uh, 0 0.5 is the smallest positive in, uh, real number okay i will divide it by 2 then 0 0.25 someone will say that 0 0.25 i divide it by 2 again then it will lead towards it is moving towards origin, but no one can say that which is the smallest positive real number. It doesn't exist, but it is greater than zero. It is greater than so a smallest positive. So a smallest positive real number we denote it by epsilon as a small as possible. There we put epsilon a positive real number as a small as possible. So you come up with when you are defining neighborhood of anything, you come up with epsilon radius or epsilon length. If it is one dimensional movement. If you, I am asking to move in along 
one dimension, then there would be epsilon, it, it will talk about interval. If I say move uh, in planar move, then you will get a disk, disk like thing. So, epsilon with epsilon radius, okay. In one dimensional move, radius is length, that how far away from that point, how far away. So, length how far away from that point from where you are defining and in uh, planar it is radius how far away from that point. So, it is saying that discrete set means if you take a point and define as a, a small as possible neighborhood. So, you will say the how I will define as a small as possible through epsilon that epsilon distance concept is epsilon distance uh, you have to be within epsilon distance of that point. Are you getting meaning of that epsilon distance? That means epsilon is a positive real number and as a small as you can take it, as a small as. So, if you take as a small as possible, uh, take a point and define a neighborhood. In that neighborhood, if no one falls, then you will say that that, uh, that set is a discrete set. Every element is having that pattern, then you will say that that set is a discrete set, discrete pattern, discrete nature. Uh, discrete uh, in linguistic, you can say that it, it looks like a discrete nature individually individual nature you observe each each points each so like the, uh, all are here uh, discrete having discrete behavior what does it mean all are having different different behavior like that all are, it is not like that uh, one is copying others in behavior or something like that okay so discrete nature discrete so here uh, discrete geometrically you can visualize like this way uh, take a even line uh, here integer take the integers 0 1, 2, 3, then here minus 1, then always you can come up with interval like this way. Here you can come interval like this, like this epsilon. Take epsilon less than 0.5. What will happen? This interval will contain only 0, no other integer, no other. It is containing only 0, no other integer. Call it epsilon. What is this interval? This one is epsilon, this one is minus epsilon. So, here neighborhood of 0 contains only 0 not containing other integers. So, this epsilon is possible or not or this interval is possible or not? It is possible. You can take 0.5, you can take 0.4, you can 0 0.3, 0 0.5. So, all the uh, 0 0.1 something like that you can take as small as possible. So, you will see that in that neighborhood no other integer of that falls. So, that kind of set, if you say that all the points are having similar behavior, then you can say that that set is a discrete set. What about this, uh, if you take 2, can you come up with an interval, that kind of epsilon interval, you can come up with like this way, you can always come up with, for every integer, member of integer you can come up with. So, integer is a discrete set. So, every countable set is a discrete set. If you take uh, sequence, uh, irrational also that one is a discrete set, you can make a discrete set. Like if you put in a uh, sequential form, then just uh, like in uh, along a line, then you can always define those intervals, those neighborhood. You can define always those neighborhood. It depends upon epsilon. You take as small as possible. Okay, you can always define. So all the countable set are discrete set. All the countable set are discrete set. So simply discrete. Simply we say that countable set defines discrete set. Okay, and discrete set defines discrete probab uh, probability model. Why? When sample aspect is discrete, then corresponding model we will call it a discrete probability model. Are you getting meaning of this or not? If you toss a coin one time, what you will get? Head and head, head comma tail. Two elements are there. If you to toss, toss a uh, toss coin two times, what you will get? How many? Four. So you can always get all these are finite. So all these are countable. All finite set happens to be countable. Even uh, 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 infinite set having bijection with natural number countable. So, all these are discrete, discreetly, element discreetly you can see those elements discreetly. So, that is the discrete pattern you observe through 
countability that you observe through countability the discrete state and that will lead towards discrete probability model discrete so two types of probability model one is discrete and another is continuous probability model you might have heard continuous probability model or discrete probability model. have you heard or not have you heard or not not okay then you will listen here next set is uncountable set a set which is not countable is uncountable very uh, uh, what uh, uh, illogical kind of definition you can say that okay Mathematically, you don't see much here. Uncountable set means not countable. Simply, you can say that. But another name is you can call it continuous set. How you define? Uh, define uh, if simply you can say that if there is no bijection from natural number to that set, if you are unable to come up with bijection or injection, then simply you will say that that set is not countable. What does it mean? It's it means that you fail to put that element of that set in a single sequence form. that set is not equal to sequence of the element of that uh, element from that given set if you fail to put uh, fail to write a set in the sequential form element of the set in the sequential form then simply you will say that that set is a what uncountable set that is the simple computational meaning of uncountable set you fail to write in a single sequence form so it is uncountable set example you can take it like close interval 0 1 or open interval 0 1 can you come up with a sequence that will represent 0 1 someone will say that 1 by n can you write all the element of 0 1 in the form of 1 by n not possible to write okay yeah it is not possible to write No, so zero one is a uncountable set. You fail to write. So uh, there is a proof. It, this proof may look uh, little bit uh, uh, complicated for you, but I will share the slide. There you can see the proof. It is very simple. Uh, it came from contour. All these are part of calculus. All these what I am covering till now, part of calculus. So so here what you do? You take a pattern, a sequence in zero one. How you are making sequence in zero one? In a in a specific way. You are saying that. A uh, sequence x is a number between 0 and 1 in such a way decimal expansion of x contains only 3 and 4. Decimal expansion of you are taking you can define sequence in 0 1. That would be a subsequence. It would be a subset of 0 1. It would be not a not equal to 0 1. It would be a subset of 0 1. You are defining a uh, sequence of point x in 0 1 in such a way that uh, uh, the decimal expansion contains just 3 and 4. What are the numbers? these numbers are coming anyone may say that what would be these number this would be rational or irrational irrational what is the difference between rational and irrational what is the difference the difference is coming from decimal representation in the rational decimal representation is either repeating or terminating like 1 by 2 is 0.5 1 by 3 is 0.3333 it will go something like that so that one is repeating in nature so that is behavior of rational number in decimal representation what is the behavior of irrational in decimal representation non terminating and and non repeating so that so rational number so these are rational sequence of rational number a specific sequence of rational number made from 3 and 4 in the decimal expansion made from now from the given sequence you construct a new point how you are constructing a point so that x will not match with any of the member of the given sequence which is having decimal play uh, in uh, two decimal places three and four it is not matches with that you are constructing so the construction you can say in a very smart way construction and this constructed new number it will be not in the given sequence what does it say that x equal to 0.43 and uh, such that x is not equal to any of xi that means x is in the open interval 0 1 but it not falls in the constructed sequence that what sequence we had taken it, it doesn't fall in that it simply say that all the member of 0 1 can't be expressed in the term of a single sequence so 0 1 is a the interval open interval 0 1 is a uncountable set you fail to put 
a bijection or injection. So that is where it is a uncountable set. Are you getting meaning of uncountable set? If you do not, just read uh, two, three times and ask question from me, then I will answer it again. So like uh, uh, that uh, a spin, a point uh, like in casino, in some movie you might have already seen that. I am not asking to visit casino, but in movie you might have seen that, okay. In few movie, Hollywood or Bollywood movie or Indian movie, you might have already seen casino. In casino, casino there, there is a game that pointer, that if you throwing a dice, something like that, that pointer moves pointer moves and after that movement it will stop at some point okay those points falls in an interval those points happens to be continuous number those falls in interval okay so in interval so generally you can say that for simplicity zero one interval one one is why here uh, open why one is open casino casino person Honor, he will not uh, uh, what uh, he will not come in mood that uh, he will allow to you in every every time. He will not uh, put that setup in such a way that you will win every every time. Is it possible that if that scenario is there, then how he will earn? He or she will earn. So that possibility. So that's why open bracket is there. Are you getting meaning of this or not? And uh, then. What is the generalization of uncountable set? That we call it continuous set. Continuous set, what does it mean? Now, uh, we try to be little bit more linguistic like that. Continuous means a set which, which is continuum in nature. Continuum in nature, that means there is no gap. There is no gap kind of things. Always you will get a point. Uh, other way, it contains an interval or union of intervals. What is meaning of interval? Do you see any gap in the interval? Interval, are you getting meaning of interval or not? Open interval, close interval, semi close interval, semi open interval, various kind of interval you might have already seen in plus 2. So, interval. So, continuous set is what? It is a set which occurs in continuum, ne, continuum nature, having continuum nature. That means it contains interval or union of intervals. So, all continuous uncountable set falls in the category of continuous set and it is practical in probability. We will proceed with continuous set, not directly we will say that uncountable set. So practical, I am trying to make it more practical. We will deal with continuous set. So what is continuous set? Take the word it is which is con continuum in nature. That means contains interval or union of interval. It is very much practical definition practical definition of continuous set. So, uh, as probabilistic model where sample of space is continuum in nature generally falls in the category of continuous probability model. Any question till now here? Just I have 5 minutes left. 10.30, class is up to 10.30. So, I should go for attendance, uh, attendance option. I will stop here. Any question?